All right, gang, as promised, I told y'all I will be putting both my Patreon exclusive videos on my YouTube channel, okay? So, dog, y'all already got the last one. If you ain't seen it, bro, go back one video before him. Go ahead and check it out, all right? But today, I'm giving y'all my drift tutorial that I put up on my channel, too, which helps people. It gives you more of an in-depth of how everything is going, too, you know what I'm saying? So, if you need this, bro, go ahead and sit back, get your popcorn, get your game ready, too, because you want need to follow along. And also, before we get into this, though, too, comment down below. Do y'all think the Super Bowl is rigged? I don't know. Look, hey, we've always been saying this for years, but all of a sudden now everybody is a they they a genius. They think it's rigged. But hey, I want to hear what y'all think, bro. Y'all think the Super Bowl is rigged? Comment down below. Anyway, let's get straight into this video. Yeah, dig. Okay, the tuning. You need to know what each individual thing does when you're tuning it, and you also want to know what's the best tune for a drift car. Now, to be honest with you, it's all really it's all subjective okay it depends on how you want the car to feel so i'm gonna tell you guys exactly how i set it up i'm gonna show you guys how i set it up but i'm gonna tell you guys what each individual thing is going to do if you raise it or if you lower it okay so of course with the gear ratio you guys already know here if you make this ratio smaller or if you make the ratio bigger okay as you guys can see the numbers going up it makes the gears smaller okay Take that, let that sink in. If you take the gear ratio and you make it a larger number, the gear goes down, they become shorter, okay? So normally when I'm rocking with the 180SX, I normally keep it at a 3.7 and really use second gear most of the time for street drift cars. If we're a little pro-am, if we're a little bit higher on the horsepower, it'll be third and so forth. Maybe if I'm on a super high horsepower, I'm talking like a thousand, then I might use fourth gear more. But for me being a streetcar guru, for the streetcars, which is what I'm gonna teach you how to tune today, I normally keep it at a second gear drifting or a third gear drifting, but a really short third gear. So maybe I might do the um, Sylvia, the S15s, but make this really short. You see how it's 80 right there? It's just if I want a little bit more smoother, but for the majority of the time that I am drifting this car, especially if you see me on online lobbies, it's normally with the 180SX and a 3.7 gear ratio okay now we move over to the tires okay now the tires this is normally where i would keep it at if i'm tandeming with people if i want to get a little bit more grip obviously more grip turn the psi down if you want to be more slidey you turn the psi up now in the front i would never go higher than 28 to 30 psi because it's kind of perfect for these street cars but if you want a little bit more of um you want the car or you want the if you want the front wheels to direct you instead of guide then you turn it down so it is more grip in the front which will direct you more now if you want it to guide you mostly words like that's how normally i want it i want it to guide me instead of directing i want it to guide it okay so i'll keep it normally at like a 28 to a four, uh, 30 psi no higher and then of course in the rear you want it to be more grippy so lower um, psi in the rear normally i keep this at a 15 to 20 psi depending on how crazy i'm going with everybody you know what i'm saying so let's go on and move on to the next one fuel normally in fuel of course you guys see the more liters you add the heavier the car gets depending on where the fuel cell is in the car or wherever the uh, the gas is it will make the car either more swingy in the back it'll make the car more stabilized in the middle or it'll just kind of really not have that much of a of a play you kind of have to feel it drive it uh, uh trial and error as far as like how the weight feels how much you want that car to really distribute the weight around because adding liters does add weight going over to electronics normally in electronics you're going to find the turbo you're going to find the abs and you're going to find traction control mostly traction control especially when it comes to drifting turn that off uh abs you want abs off you want the when you hit that front uh the left uh, left foot brake which we'll get into that's a little bit more advanced but when we get into the left foot braking you're going to want those wheels to either lock up but not too much okay but you want them to lock up to a degree because that allows you to elongate drifts and keep those rear wheels spinning keep them jinx juiced up you know what i'm saying then we move over to alignment now alignment is a little bit finicky depending on how you want the car to feel or if you want the car to guide you if you want the car to be um more grippy in the in the corners rather than the straight whatever it is okay so i'm gonna explain this to you guys all right so in the camber of course if you guys don't know by now the net more negative camber it is the more out it's bent okay positive camber will be inwards 
negative camber will be outwards all right now normally you want it set to a, for me personally i keep it at around a four negative four degrees no higher than negative five to be honest because negative five is a little too much for this game okay keep it around like negative 4.5 is normally what i would say and then the toe y'all know how toe works if you don't i'm gonna teach you toe is how inward or outward the car's been not the wheels bending inward or outward that means the front of them going either this way or inwards okay outwards or inwards now normally you want negative in the front which is a outward bend okay when you have an outward bend the car touches more road it is really it's it's more of a guider and it allows you to have more trajectory of where you're drifting the more you put out on the toe but don't do too much toe because then it's unnecessary wheel um wheel wear and it also makes the drifting very very finicky really really big key point is in the front you want more negative toe and you want more negative camber in the back you want more positive toe and more positive camber as you guys can see right here i have a point zero six or a point six sorry a point six degree positive camber which over here translates to a negative 0 0.17 which is actually perfect almost perfect you know what i'm saying maybe you want a little bit more camber but i'm going to tell you this when you put more camber on the road your straights are way more finicky they are not as good they're not as grippy but in the corners when you put uh camber on it you are going to be a little bit more grippy because the car is going to shift weight to that side allowing those wheels to be from here which normally you'll see them as a bend to a straight they're going to shift weight onto it and it's going to touch more ground giving you that more outer traction okay now perfectly perfectly set up how i have it right now i wouldn't change a thing you guys can go ahead and take this if you want to or of course you know what i'm saying you can change it how you will okay i'm just going to tell you this more positive uh camber better on the straights horrible on the turns negative camber better on the turns worse on the straights okay and of course same thing with toe um don't have too much toe in the back don't have too much um toe in the front you want to just feel in just right and enough grip to at least direct the car so this is basically the rule of thumb i would give you guys which a little bit negative toe in the front a little bit positive toe in the back a little bit positive camber in the back a little bit negative camber in the front all right now dampers dampers you don't really have to worry about too much but i'm going to tell you guys this when it comes to rebound that is how uh how quick or how like how much like when the spring compresses the rebound of it coming back out that's basically it the higher you make that number the more stiff that rebound is that rebound is going to be a lot more quicker and same thing with the bump basically the bump is uh how much like absorption it takes or you know what i'm saying basically just think about it like that rebound bump rebound bump <laughs> okay that's basically the forces that you are changing to be honest with you i wouldn't change these that much if you want a little bit more rebound in the back it could help a little bit with drifting but not as well with gripping because you want that grip in the back okay so i wouldn't really touch this that much but i will give you guys this rule of thumb in the front you want better bump especially with drifting and in the back you want a little bit better rebound just a little bit or at least keep the rebound a little bit like you know not not too high you don't really want to touch this that much until you really get into the nitty of it okay now let's move on to something more important which is drivetrain drivetrain is basically how much that diff is locked okay if you want a full lock to diff everything 100 that means every single time you hit the tires or every sorry every single time you hit the gas those tires are going to spin at the same rate okay so if you lock this the tires are going to be locked if you open it more the wheels are going to uh, they're going to spin at a little bit of different velocities to help you have more grip so if you feel like you're a little too slidey open up that grip or not open up, <laughs> open up that dip okay and of course the diff power is what it is while you're on the gas the diff coast is how it is when you're off the gas this is normally where i leave it at a little bit higher on the diff power and on the coast you want it to still have a little bit of wheel spin but you want it to grip up just a little bit but not too much okay so this is normally where i leave it at for the 180 sx i might put the diff power a little bit down to 70 and the diff coast down to 60 depending on how fast the person in front of me is drifting 
but if I want better correction, if I want better um, wheel spin, then I would crank this up just a little bit and keep it where it's at right now, which is 90 and 80, making it, you know what I'm saying, that much better on the sliding. Now, the generic, over here, you're definitely going to find the engine limiter, which I normally turn that all the way up. More limiter, more revs, baby. You know what I'm saying? And then the brake bias and the brake power. Now, brake bias and brake power really come when you want a left foot brake, okay? Now, the brake bias for me, I put that all the way up, normally at 85. I never, never really go that much higher than 85 because that's 85% of the brake power going to the front, okay? So if you're going to the front with all your brake power, what's gonna happen, especially when you have ABS, those front tires are gonna lock a little bit, but it's gonna help you when you are left foot braking. Make sure for these, the rule of thumb is to make sure if you are braking, especially if you're left foot braking, that it's not overwhelming your car. So every single time you hit the left foot brake, Make sure it's not taking the car and making it oversteer like bad. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't want to oversteer bad, but you want it just enough that those wheels lock and you can correct and keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? Just keep it moving a little bit. But then we go over here to ARB, which is anti-roll bars. And of course we got our suspension. Now, normally with drift cars, of course they're low. Everybody likes their drift car to be low, but don't make it too low because the lower you make it the tighter those springs are already which makes it weirder with the weight shift now if you are too low that weight shift is not going to be too much and it's just going to be purely your car sliding based off the weight that it's just pushing out the back okay so you want the springs to be a little loose but not too crazy in the back i would have the springs a little bit looser and if you want to bring it up a little bit higher, you can, but I wouldn't have the back monster trucking compared to the front. So as you guys can see on the wheel rate, which is how much that wheel is already like expanded or contracted, okay? The wheel rate is gonna be expansion and contraction of the, um, the spring already in play. So the lower you make that spring rate, it's gonna be a looser spring, but it's going to be it's going to have travel okay it's going to have travel but it's going to be a looser spring the tighter you make that which is the higher nanometer which means how the tighter the spring is already so it's going it's going to be already expanded to where it's at right and then as you lower it the uh the spring is going to be more stiffer okay it's going to be stiffer but the rule of thumb i'll just give you guys right now is in the front you want a little bit more stiffer suspension for drifting in the back you want a little bit more looser suspension but you want it high enough that the uh the weight distributes okay so you don't have to worry about really too much on power and handbraking to do those transitions you're purely hitting that wheel popping that gas and it's just going you know what i'm saying it's moving but you don't want it to move too much with the anti-rolls come in now being that it's a drift car in the front you want tighter anti-roll you want the front end to guide you in the rear you want that ass to swing literally you want that rear end to swing so that arb should be a little bit looser in the back than it is in the front as you guys can see right here we got 1700 in the front we got 8000 in the back okay oh, i'm sorry we got 17000 in the front <laughs> 8000 in the back so of course in the front we have tighter anti-rolls leaving less roll in the front and more roll in the back end of course hence drifting <laughs> okay so after you guys basically set up your car how you want it to feel then you will move on to the driving portion of course and that's why we got our steering wheel set up 